guys as what I mentioned will be working on the century and that's the role of IT in education technology, educational technology. So first, let's identify the benefits of technology to teachers and students. Okay. So first, this equips students for their, of course, future careers. So digital tools will surely help students, of course, prepare for their future. And uh, how, how this will happen through the internet, mobile devices and computers students have chance to acquire key skills to compete globally for in-demand jobs regardless of where jobs might be in the IT, agriculture, art, health, research, food industry or elsewhere so workers need of course, computer skills. So this is not just uh, about the the major shifts that you have taken, but definitely um, most empl employer, even uh, you know, school administrator would want their people equipped with uh, information technology. Now, guys, through these advanced tools, technical skills can be exercised. But more than that, it's instilling learning as a skill for life as well. So technology must be used to engage students to embrace love of learning new things. And this is what our students really love to do. So they, they love exploring. Okay? So it must help them to explore things that interest them. Moreover, guys, it bring it, uh, it must bring limitless possibilities of learning to fully equip them in the future. So that's one benefit. Then, of course, it personalizes learning and teaching approaches. Do you know, guys, that each person has their own learning style? I know you'll agree with me. Some learn better through hearing, and some through great visuals. Some lean more on logical learning and uh, some more on verbal. Yes, it varies and it's quite challenge, uh, a challenge for teachers to perform all this in class. Of course, you have to think technology because teachers can customize learning for students and it enables them to improve their instruction methods and personalize learning, thus increasing their productivity and efficiency as instructors. And also through these helpful tools, teachers can provide exciting activities and this include watching videos to further delve into the topic and maybe creating robots to apply their learning. It is also great content that help or helps spark and um, boost curiosity in, in, in the learner. So that's one benefit. Another benefit is this drives 
down costs in the long run. No? And then that brings also more learning opportunities. True enough, guys, um, tech, technolo tech, technological tools are, of course, expensive. No? But in the long run, they'll cut your costs. For example, we have ebook or online modules will drive down your cost in printing your materials. Okay. And then another one is buying a computer for teachers will save them in time computing the students' grades and creating tests. Now in 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 my case, uh I also maximize the use of uh technological tools like um us in the laboratory high school we make use of the matrix of excel in the computation so we also make use of the product of microsoft excel if you're familiar with vlookup so we use that to easily compute grades so what we we just do is we add up the formula and then um and just uh of course inputting the data and then formula we look up then right away we will we'll come up with the grade of our students error free no less from error because um before when the technology is not yet introduced teachers make use of calculator and um, they input the grades manually by writing them in the class record. So now there's the, the class record now is uh also e class record in the sense that uh they do not have or we do not have the traditional class record now. Instead everything is saved in the computer. Okay. So that's what I meant. And number four, it boosts teamwork and communication. Technology guys can uh, foster these skills. Teachers and students can remain in touch even outside the school vicinity. No, and that's happening now. So we do not see in person, but we have this um technological devices or applications that help us communicate even without seeing um uh, face to face. Right? Excuse me. Online lessons and games encourage them to work together even apart. Not only does it promote productivity, guys, it also encourages responsibility on both parties, students and learners. Will you work with your team even if you're not together? Can you finish a task given by your group leader? Though you're apart, Accountability can be exercised as well. So these are the benefits of technology to teachers and students. Okay. So we'll proceed to here. Okay. The components of an effective learning environment. Okay. So in here, uh, when you build an optimal learning experience for students in a particular course or curriculum is, of course, perhaps the most innovative aspect of teaching. Okay, So that's why from time to time, curriculum is being revised, of course, to um, get updated with the latest trend, for example, in education. So although there's a desire to concentrate either on a traditional educational learning environment, such as classes, lecture rooms, and laboratories, or on technology utilized to build online personal learning environments, we call that as PLE. So learning environments, guys, are broader than all such physical components. And those include the characteristics of learner, as you can see here. 
So this one is learning environment from the perspective of teacher. So we have to, of course, consider the nature of our learner. So we have to identify the characteristics of our learner as well as the goals for teaching and learning. Of course, we always start with objectives, right? And that's the goal, okay? And then the activities that will best support learning. Assessment strategies that will best measure and drive learning. And of course, the culture that infuses the learning environment. Now, as what I've mentioned, that figure shows one possible learning environment from the perspective of teacher or the instructor. So teacher, teachers can have little to no influence about other components like um, learning, learning patterns, tools, but may have complete control over certain components such as curriculum, collection, and whether learners should be assisted. So there are a set of sub components with each of the main components that will need to be considered. Actually, it's the subcomponents like the content structure, practical activities, feedback, technologies, assessment methods that actual decisions need to be made. So there are many considerations that have been addressed like um, the creation of ethical conduct, structural variables, or professional accreditation. No? This is seen also in our college, no? both of which may also have an effect on the academic atmosphere in which a teacher will function. Now, building a model, guys, of learning environment is a perceptual tool that seeks to offer a holistic view of the whole learning context for a particular course or curriculum by a particular instructor or professor with a similar vision of learning, definitely. Yet, the choice of components and their relative value would be guided by personal philosophies and convictions about knowledge, learning, and, of course, teaching methods. And to add also the figure of the learning environment from a teacher's perspective has the primary responsibility to create a conducive learning environment, but it's also vital to consider the learner's perspective in building one. And um, surely, adult learners can create their own personal autonomous learning environments. Now, the idea is to determine those components that need to be considered in teaching the subject or teaching the course, especially those important elements aside from content or curriculum, okay? Now, we go with uh, the last part of what, uh, what we are discussing. It's the ABCs of online teaching, okay? So, accept change. In online learning and teaching, nothing is constant except or everything is uh nothing is constant no or but change okay so now particularly the pandemic has thrown educational or institutions to 
a vortex while several teachers struggle to enable a quick change from conventional to online classes. Though online classes have ended already and uh, in-person classes will be now resumed particularly in our school, no, in the second sem, you're, you're aware that it will be a full face-to-face -face now. Nevertheless, um, the COVID-19 has demonstrated the creativity and resilience of our administrators, faculty, and staff, no, and challenge accepted according to them. Now, as efforts are being made to enhance a learning environment that engages all students. The challenges of digital learning have been amplified and the rough ride for faculty members who are new to the digital world have unveiled the need for continuing education and training. So accept change. Of course, the face-to-face -face and online instruction are distinct. It will not, or copy paste will not be applied, no? or we call it copy and pasting. Copying and pasting curricular material on a course frame is, of course, not the same with online teaching methods. So, online learning, guys, permits the teachers to integrate relevant technolo technological applications to further improve students' digital literacy. So not just knowing the basic of it, even teachers, you know, go outside of their comfort zone and join their students to learn online, no? Uh, online in the sense of online learning, online teaching. And then, of course, we have B. And B is for, it's not for Of course, be present. Of course, the, the changes to online learning will make the teachers feel like they're falling or failing to do something. In fact, guys, you know, um, before uh, I continue with, with this one, the, our senior teachers, you know, um, experience anxiety during, during online teaching because of course they're not into you know embracing online teaching no so they're the traditional teachers so as the pandemic struck our country so they're the ones who were effective no in terms of teaching so they even resorted to you know applying for an early retirement because they cannot afford to embrace the technology now, um, log in regularly to review conversations, grade assignments, and um, address queries. So that's what uh, the module meant when it's uh, be present. No? So it's about uh, always checking regularly the online platforms that the school uh, is using. No? Since students need multiple types of interaction, Teachers also need to schedule virtual class hours through Zoom or uh, in our school, we're using Microsoft Teams, which will create opportunities to establish personal connection with students. So the teachers must always be present online no? in the, the learning platforms that uh, they have set no? with, with the students communicate okay it's always important to communicate whether we're in the face to face or online learning, teaching learning um post important reminders and send messages using a supportive language to serve as a model for students so we have to consider also using short video notifications to replace Text only correspondence, no, to, to send reminders or an overview for each module or unit. 
because oral communication is an important 21st century workplace ability according to Ortiz. Thus, guys, assignments that enable students to improve such skills may be beneficial. And the regular and ongoing instructor presence, especially when uh, students are studying partly or wholly online, so it's very important to student success or for student success. This means effective communication between the teacher and the students. So it is particularly important also to encourage inter-student communication, so either face-to-face -face or online. No? Now, um, in our case, so we have the MS Teams, we have also the Messenger, and we have this Zoom for the live session, Zoom video conferencing. Next, we have diversity instructional materials. Okay. Or diversify. Sorry, it has to be diversify. Diversify instructional materials. So, when we say diversify, this is about reviewing the course content. Curriculum, references, photos, and other resources for diverse learners. <coughs> Prior to the um, pandemic, or eh, at the start of the pandemic, should I say. So, this is what the teachers were busy you know, about doing um, diversifying instructional materials. Okay? And um, in, in our case, at the laboratory high school, we just consider the most, or we just consider the meaningful uh, essential learning for teaching. You know? uh, we cannot afford to discuss fully the the lesson or the uh, the lessons in 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 one school year so what we did was to select the most essential learning for teaching okay so that's what we did and then um exemplify cultural cultural sensitivity by introducing students to Diverse perfect perspectives, specifically those from oppressed and um, marginalized communities. For E, engage intentionally. So, of course, given the physical distance, an online course can still encourage heart to heart connections. So, teachers can send virtual handshakes. A greeting video so that's a greeting video so it's great training to introduce yourself or the teachers to students before introducing them to the syllabus and of course other course requirements but this is more of the meet and greet no so use your welcoming video or the teacher should use her welcoming video to demonstrate her personality and love for the profession um, not just the video, but uh, it can be done uh, right during the live session. For F, first impressions matter. Okay. So, in accessible files and disorganized presentations affect students' retention. So, the teacher should assure to double check links. And spelling grammar and dates of instructional materials and resources for easy and reliable access so make it a habit to update these links and resources to show recent global issues and needs okay for g of course you have to greet students so Address students with their preferred name and gender pro gender pronouns. No, 
So this data can retrieve through a text or video discussion prompt. So if students are called by their names, so that has to be considered, okay? H4, have fun. So assign a syllabus scavenger hunt for students to learn to adapt to the learning management system course expectations, and support services. So they know who to contact for various needs. So this can be helpful for first-gen students, generation students. For I, well, it's there already all. Ignite curiosity. So the first day of class involves an icebreaker or energizer until the core syllabus is checked. So the best approach is to link students directly to the substance of the course and to illustrate its applicability to real-world situations. Well, this can take place in the form of video an article or a discussion question to promote dialogue. And then just breathe. Every change, guys, is scary. No? Even the transition from face to face to um, online. So we have to remember to implement the skills that we have enhanced. No? So the ability to manage this process is likely to uncover the fields of imagination that would bring students to learning. Keep watch for K. So it's the responsibility of the teacher to always monitor their students. As much as possible, contact them, particularly those who stop participating or attending your online classes. If possible, empathize as you express concern and willingness to help and intervene. This happened, guys, during the pandemic while um, we still have, we're still in the online um, mode of learning. You know? Many of our students you know, didn't attend to Zoom learning, uh, Zoom video conferencing for um, many reasons. No? So the, the major reason is you know, anxiety followed by family issues. So that's why we have to keep watch of our students. The simple act helps retention and shows that they matter to, to us. If necessary and require, required, we can send an early warning for follow-up by advisors and other administrative personnel. So the proper channeling is the subject teacher, will contact the student. If nothing happens, then the, the subject teacher will endorse this to, to his or her advisor. So the advisor will do the visitation. And then once it's um once the student responds, the teacher may send uh, the student to the guidance office for um possible consultation, advising, counseling, no? And uh, if the problem still like uh persists then um uh, we need to consider or seek for the advice of the admin, uh, administration, okay? So there's proper proper channeling for that. And the key idea is we, we have to watch out for our student. No? So let's keep watch. Now for L, life happens. So since students are balancing several obligations, we need to add a health insurance program or 
life insurance policy to the curriculum or the core syllabus. Now, the program does not absolve the student from being responsible, but expresses only the concern whether a life circumstance, for example, conception, disability, or disease, happens during the semester. So you may also offer consultation to talk about personal matters. So any help that you can extend to student makes a big difference. And um, again, in our class, during the pandemic, you know, Many of our, not, not many, but uh, maybe a few number of our students, you know, uh, have come up with this, um, with this circumstance that they lost their parents, you know, their parents um, encountered um, a major disease, you know, even uh, when, when, when COVID struck your students. So the students need our support also, even if we, we just talk to them um, online, that matters most. For M, model professionalism. So you, you have to respond immediately and talk politely. Now the tone matters, guys. So when we say tone, this is how you, you know, you, you articulate your, your communication to your students, no? The teacher should, of course, exemplify patience by answering phone calls, reacting to correspondence, and marking assignments within a recorded timeline, express in the course syllabus. So if guys, uh, online learning is challenging to learners, very challenging. Same goes with the teachers, okay? For N, never assume. So assumption will contribute to an explosion of questions that detract students from the substance of the course and deter them from persisting. So. To avoid that instance, the Quality Matters Framework recommends that links for the tutorial or other tools to be included in the Learning Management System course. Now, the full use should be made of existing resources, including institutionally supported learning technologies, open educational resources, learning technology staff, and experience of your colleagues. For O, organize student groups. Though it's online, still at the laboratory high school, uh, we, the, the, the academic organizations are still intact, no? So, create opportunities for collaboration through the use of groups for discussions and projects. The, the presence of collaboration in the in-person or face-to-face -face will still be observed, though it's online, you know, teaching. Um, we are lucky, for, for example, when we make use of the MS Teams video conferencing, even the Zoom, they have this feature that can make group discussions, no? So, it's still possible. And this allows students create a bond with their classmates, offers external resources, and trains students for the complexities of team, team for the workplace. So you can also create group chats on Facebook, addressing special concerns and interests of the students. That's why, guys, uh, we I make possible the GC, though the GC is actually 
being used for instant communication. So that's why I also include GC as um, one of our um, online platforms. No? And for P, prepare to grow. Now, the digital environment offers opportunities to develop and, of course, demonstrate a growth mentality. Just be willing to try out a new tool, technique, or approach. The, many of the instructional techniques that have been used in person can be adapted also for online instruction. Q for quit stressing. So you cannot give what you do not have. So make sure that you, you prioritize your health so above all. Okay, so do not be stress so if everything is uh beyond your control then uh be it no do not be uh too stressed for our repetition cells consistently adopt the same framework with every pattern or function so make it easy for students to explore the course Okay, teach critical thinking. And then um, for S, I missed the S there. Spell it out. So be clear, concise, and remove any confusion. So say what you mean in different ways to appeal to a variety of learning methods. So S is for spell it out. It's available in your module, don't worry. So teach critical thinking. Aid students determine the quality of digital content. You provide opportunities also for students to evaluate the accuracy of knowledge and shared on, for example, Wikipedia, Google Scholar, Scopus, and Web of Science. You or understand your audience. Of course, that's important. Well-crafted questions can disclose essential information. An introductory topic that asks students to share one item so they need to learn about can expose issues such as childcare, travel, or access to technology. V guys for value every voice. So use tools like um, Flipgrid and VoiceThread to engage students in meaningful discussions. So mind the introverted students who have interesting ideas to express but are sometimes overlooked by students who are more active in typical classrooms. W is for why matters. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Is the backward design model to develop the objectives of the course. Start by <coughs> excuse me, considering what you want students to learn and uh, be able to do after your course. So you can also create this so what question of students in your mind. Then uh, be able to provide them practical answers, of course, or employ probing and class discussion. You can do it for why. Passion and discipline are important prerequisite for guiding learners. So you have joined this profession because you love your discipline and enjoy your teaching in the next generation. Now, this ABCs of online teaching, guys, will be your guide. Um, though, when you go outside and uh, after your four-year course, uh, when you're into teaching, though, um, it will be going back to the traditional face-to-face. -face. You can still um, consider online teaching, you know, even... Um, if uh if the school is not uh has not adopted that no has not, ha, has fully embraced again the face to face but in you you can do it like um if you provide your students um another uh room for um learning 
you can still uh consider online uh, online learning no? zoom with confidence so i encourage students to use the virtual background feature for meetings to alleviate their worries about their living environment so you you encourage your student also to participate so that's the abc 